Three rockets have hit a near U.S. forces stationed at Erbil International Airport in northern Iraq. A statement by the Kurdish counter-terrorism force said the attack was carried out using an explosive-laden drone or drones. There are no media reports of damage or casualties. Witnesses say they heard at least six explosions in the area. This is the latest in a series of attacks on American forces in the Arab country. Airport in the capital of the semi-autonomous Kurdish region has been attacked several times in the past year. Joining us now from Toronto is Mr. Zafar Bangesh, Director at the Institute of Contemporary Islamic Thought. Hello, Mr. Bangesh. Always a pleasure to have you on Press TV, sir. Hope you're safe and doing well. Your thoughts on these repeated attacks against U.S. forces on Iraqi soil? Well, what this indicates is that uh, American presence is not welcome in the region. Uh, people all across the region, whether it's in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, uh, and we saw the most uh, recent example in Afghanistan where America and its NATO allies were driven out of the country after a 20-year war. It is absolutely certain that America's malign influence is resented by the people of the region because it has brought nothing but death and destruction to millions of people in that region. And so it's not surprising that there have been repeated attacks in Erbil and other places. In fact, a number of uh, political parties in Iraq have repeatedly called for uh, withdrawing all American forces from Iraq. And so this is something that we witness. It is now becoming much clearer in the sense that people are now speaking out forcefully and we see the consequence that there are attacks on American forces to drive them out of the region. And Mr. Uh, Zafar Bangesh, uh, I'm sure you remember the day after the uh, Americans got their last uh, handful of soldiers out of uh, Afghanistan, we saw a presser there in, in the U.S. Uh, Capitol where President Joe Biden said that the era of American interventionism and trying to rebuild nations and uh, so-called import or export democracy or whatnot is over. Uh, so why doesn't that, or does it, apply to Iraq and Syria? Well, it should, but unfortunately it doesn't because we see that America still has forces in both countries. Uh, we know that in July, the Iraqi Prime Minister uh, visited Washington and had a meeting with your President Joe Biden, and they basically agreed to change the uh, designation of the presence of American forces in Iraq. And they are not going to be in combat operations, they are only going to be in training uh, mode. Now, we know exactly what kind of training America provides. It spent something like 90 to $95 billion in Afghanistan, and yet when the Americans pulled out, their, their armed forces simply collapsed. So I don't think that the Iraqi people need American training. They are not really good at uh, training anybody. Uh, the American presence, both in Iraq and in Syria, um, and in, in support of the Saudi war of aggression on Yemen are essentially meant to keep this region destabilized. Although Biden is saying that uh, he's not going to go around nation building, etc. But if that's the case, then there is absolutely no reason why American forces are staying in the region. They should be pulled out immediately, not even next day, next year. Right away they should be pulled out and let the people of the region decide their own destiny. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure to check in with you from Toronto. Zafar Bengesh, director at the Institute of Contemporary Islamic Thought, joining us.